Hello there, this is Malek, and well, as you can see, welcome to the first part. It's going to be the tutorial, um, and I might actually get a quick game as well, to FTL, Faster Than Light. I, this game's been one of those ones that's kind of been in the back of my mind for quite a while, um, and it's like a space, randomly generated space rogue type game where death is death, and it's not a fair game. <laughs> so, I'm, just for you guys, I've been through a tutorial and had a couple of games. Um, it's not easy. Unless you switch it to easy, in which case it becomes too easy. So, I, I'm going to stick with the, the normal difficulty. Let's go for the tutorial for you guys. Um, a lot of it's actually quite intuitive. Um, I'm the captain of a Federation starship on an important mission. We're being torn apart by vicious rebels, and I have data that's vital to the defense of the Federation. Um, traveling through dangerous sectors, rebel fleet in hot pursuit, got to make it to the exit beacon of each sector before the rebels catch me. Okay, this is my ship, the Kestrel, um, and you could actually name it yourself, start with different crew members and name them themselves. Now, one of the key things that was a, it was kind of like whether I did a, a, a let's play of this or not, was could I rename the crew? Now, when you first start out a proper game, not the tutorial, you can give each of the three crew members you start with their own name. But from that point on, anyone you, any extra crew members already have names. And I thought, ugh, I want to name them after subs, I want to name them after random, th you know what I mean? I want to give them all names. So, I figured out how to load the save game into a hex editor and edit the names of the characters. It's not as straightforward as you'd think, but, nah, I've done it before in the past. So that's why I'm going to be doing it. So I'm going to be naming all of my crew when I start properly after you guys. So yeah, it's it's basically people who have commented a lot. Um, so I've just got a few names that pick off the top of my head. Maybe people I've quested with, but, but, but mostly who people who have been commenting on my videos recently will, will be far more likely to get in there. Don't be offended if you don't get picked. I reply to a lot of comments. There's I've got more names than I could ever possibly deal with, but you know, I'm going to keep an eye out for those those people. Um, so anyway, there's the the inside of my ship. Down here's my my power stuff, my reactor. Um, here are the subsystems that don't need power. Um, and basically, I can hover over these, um, and it will light up in the ships. If I hover over the shield systems, there's the shield room. Hover over the engines, there's the engine room. Oxygen generation, medical. Um, and weapon systems. And then obviously I've got the cockpit, the internal camera systems, or sensors actually, I think in general, and then door control, which allows me to open and close doors remotely. Without that, you can't open and close doors. Oh, and I can also go open every door on the ship, <coughs> except the outer doors, uh, and close them all again. And yeah, that's basically it, really. Um, this stuff here is my fuel. Each time I jump, I use fuel. Um, okay, well, it didn't. I should really read these. That's missiles. Um, some weapons use missiles, many don't. That's the amount of drone parts. I've not done anything drones yet. Um, they're very expensive to install, drones are. So, anyway, um, engines are powered down. So, what I'm going to do is power the engines up. Um, job done, basically. And you can kind of reduce these, and so I can cut the oxygen generation and then the oxygen starts dropping <laughs> or I can put it back on and, and, and have it going. Um, what else have we got? Oh no! Who oh, no! The engines have exploded! This is the tutorial. So I'm gonna send these two guys over to the engine room. So it all plays in real time um, and they're just basically gonna start repairing it. And as you can see at the bottom left here is slowly, bit by bit, bar by bar, repairing. So I've got partial engines, which is why it's orange. And then finally, I've got full engines. Yay! Um, basically, that's sorted. Now, excuse me, when you take damage, your hull takes damage, which is the bar at the top. You can't repair the hull while in space uh, without certain types of upgrades, but generally speaking, you know, you're not going to repair that. You lose that, the whole ship explodes. Um, Alright. So, what you can do is you can distribute your crew around certain systems, and when these little silhouettes light up at the bottom here, that means that that location is, is staffed. Um, 
and it gives bonuses. So when that's staffed, it means that my shields recharge quicker, weapons recharge faster, engines give you more evasion, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, oxygen deprivation I've, I've demonstrated. Um, blah, 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 the silhouette. Oh, there's a fire! Quick! Um, you can press space to pause it. One of the and I, it's so automatic. You just open up the outer doors, the whole chamber depressurizes, and of course the fire goes out. And then you can close it again. Oh, the other thing as well. Although when you open all doors, oh actually I better not open all doors there. Although when you open all doors, only the internal doors open. When you close them, they all close, um, including the outer doors. Um, yeah, luckily. When you depressurize your entire ship, people don't get sucked out into space. That would be bad. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, as long as we've got fuel, we've got someone in the cockpit, and the engines are up and running and fully charged, we can jump. I mean, we don't actually need someone in the engine room to jump, but it charges everything up quicker if they are, I think. And, well, you need someone in the cockpit because he leaves. As you can see, can't jump. Engine's operating, but can't jump. So let's jump. This is the main map, that's where I am. These are the systems that I can visit. Um, and let's just go to that node. Okay. Ooh, we've come across a horrible, horrible pirate. Um, yeah, every now and again with choices you get these blue ones and they just mean that you, you, you can only pick this because of a certain reason, like you've got better engines or something like that. Um, so yeah, you'd best normally go for those. Okay, welcome to combat. We can press space to pause or not. Um, so I'm going to pause it and activate the weapons and target the enemy shield systems. I've only got dual lasers, that's rubbish. Okay, I'm going to unpause it. Weapon pops out, starts charging up. Now weapons do self-fire, but they charge quicker when you've got someone in weapons. Oh, someone's fired but missed. They've missed because the pilot's dodging. Oh, look at that, nice. The only thing I would say is that it's, it's shields recharge very quickly, and they've got some decent shields, um, which is a shame because it, you find it very difficult. Well, it's auto fire. You find it very difficult to actually get through if you've only got one weapon or, or just ordinary weapons, because by the time the weapons recharge, the shields are back up, and as you can see, you're sort of never going to penetrate their shields. Um, luckily, I now have a missile launcher. This is part of the tutorial. Limited shots. I'm going to launch that. What I'm going to do is... Oh, I've done stupid things there. Alright, come on, launch the missile. Okay, I'm going to launch the missile. Missiles often penetrate shields, not always. Oh, look at that. I've hit the enemy ship. Um, there's a fire in their shield generation system. So I'm going to fire my next missile at their weapons. The lasers I'm going to keep shooting at the shields, because they're only damaged, they're not taken out completely. There we go, taken them out completely. Yeah! Missile finished them off. Simple as that. Oh, got a random new weapon. Cool. So, in this is my um, ship screen. Upgrades, crew, equipment. We've got a halberd beam. Cool. Cool. Slow, but reliably powerful beam. Requires three power. Let's swap it around then. Okay, we've not got enough power for that, so go to the upgrades, boost the power, boost the everything really. Let's just, let's just go for it. Now, oh, actually, let's, oh, I can't boost it anymore, but let's power that down. There we go. And that can power up the halberd beam. And you can redistribute things. For example, if I need a bit more power in one system, I can take it out of there and redirect it somewhere else. So it's you can manage your power between all your systems. So it's quite cool, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, these charge up while they're powered and then fire. That's basically the tutorial.